Unfortunately, you're probably very familiar with Dylan Mulvaney. He's the man who dresses up not just like a woman, but like some disturbing caricature of a woman, trying to embrace every female stereotype and act them out at their at their worst, at their most obnoxious, and then pretends that he actually is a woman and gets offended with when anyone says that he's not. And then he's gone all in and had surgeries for it. And then he tanked Bud Light in his in the cooperation uh, between the two. They lost twenty seven billion apparently in market value due to the partnership that he had with them. Um, not his fault directly. Actually, it's more theirs than anything. But in any case, they they had their their massive advertising campaign that nobody can forget and which makes you feel sick anytime you see that brand. Well, now he's been invited to give a speak at St. Louis University in Missouri, which is officially at least a Catholic university, or specifically a Jesuit university. Uh, sadly, the, the, Jesu the Jesuits are not what they were supposed to be, not what they once were, um, and they seem to have sort of like the the extremes, I've noticed this, that the the Order, the Society of Jesus, which is what the Jesuits are, uh, seem to kind of have like the very worst, most leftist kind of just gaze, um, and then like the very best of the uh, intellectual and, you know, theologically correct and sound. Um, I don't know why that is, I think it's because they've always attracted intellectuals, and so they have like the, the, the sort of great, know the depths of your malevolence kind of thing going on there. But anyway, uh, it's a Jesuit university officially, but this same university, demonstrating my point about how they're being the very worst, also offers DEI spotlight videos, yes, diversity, equity and inclusion videos, with different people talking about just how much they have embraced wokeness, basically, and faculty, of course, uh, I'm talking about here. That's how bad they are. Now, I just want to slow down and just say, so they're getting Dylan to come over here to this university and give a talk about being trans and so on and promote his agenda. But they're a Catholic university and everything that he's doing is in contradiction, violation to the actual faith, the tenets of the faith of the Catholic Church, which are clear. And yet he's doing it anyway and he's being invited anyway. So I think this is kind of embl emblematic of a problem with so many, I mean, yes, Catholic universities, but a bit more than that, just the, the apathy that I talked about in a recent article um, within a lot of um, dioceses, especially in the United States. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting that over in Africa, they're much better about these things, um, the, the Catholics over there. But the college Republicans at this particular uh, college decided to try and get a woman's sports activist to come and give a talk, uh, Paula Scanlon, I believe that's how you pronounce her name. They tried to get her to come the day after Mulvaney's visit, as they put it, to balance the viewpoints. But the school denied that request, saying that they didn't have enough security available, they couldn't accommodate the request. Now, a few points here. Uh, firstly, if they can't handle the security, then they should only have the, the one speaker, they shouldn't have Dylan, who's in direct contradiction to Catholic teachings. But this whole thing where the college Republicans, I think they were just trying to like play the sort of political game and say, well, hey, we just want to balance the viewpoints. But even that, that's kind of like a a messed up position. Again, I get that they were appealing to the, the school um, in a political environment where they didn't feel like they had any better options. But if we just slow down a minute, like how messed up is it that you would want to balance the viewpoints at all and not just say no to the guy? Because we don't need balanced viewpoints at a Catholic university in order to say this is wrong, this is sinful, like this is not complicated, like literally the, the, ch the church has taught this repeatedly, it is not in, in some kind of like wishy-washy area where nobody's quite sure of the doctrine, that's not where we are. And so if you want to have him there as what? emblematic of like living a sinful lifestyle and promoting it on others? Is, is that what we're saying? And if so, like what would that look like with other sinful varieties? Would you have somebody in who was like an adulterer to come and give his side of the story or her side of the story? And then we could have somebody afterwards talk about what it's like to actually live in a monogamous marriage? Uh, 
how about murderers? Do you have like one and the other or same for pedophiles? And again, that's actually part of the movement toward uh, accepting pedophiles is a real one, uh, you know, accepting them as just people who have a, have a sexual orientation. Um, so I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to just go, well, we just need balanced viewpoints. No, no, what you need is to teach what is right and what is true. That's what you need. And you don't need to pull in just evil and sin into your institution in order to, in order to make that point. You know, I think it's very easy for people to learn the perspectives of influencers like Dylan at this point in time, and you don't need them to be pulled onto college campuses where people are, I mean, presumably trying to live in a better, more Catholic way. But obviously, if they went to St. Louis, they're not really getting an actual Catholic education, which is the same for far too many of these different Catholic universities. I know it's difficult for people who are trying to like look for an authentic um, Catholic education, or even just a Christian education now, there's so many of them that are so unbelievably bad. And of course, in this case, you haven't seen anything from the Archbishop, you know, hasn't issued any sort of comment about what's going on? No, nothing. Absolute apathy and complacency and toleration of evil, which, I mean, we shouldn't be tolerant of evil. Right? That's, that's the point. It's not a virtue. It's not. And we we ought to do better. We ought to be able to assert what is what is good, what is evil, and delineate between them and promote that which is good. And instead, we have this sort of like weird ambiguity towards uh, towards evil, a sort of, um, I guess you could say complacency, but it's like an, an indifference as if everything's just some kind of neutral. Uh, a, a, we're living in a world of relativism. That's not the way to go, and it doesn't form people, it doesn't help them, it actually harms them. And we should have better from the Archbishop, we should have better from the college and the universities, and we should have better from, I mean, frankly, you should have the parents who are actually paying for these kids' institutions, for their educations, uh, in absolute uproar as well. The fact that we don't see that, I think, is emblematic of a much larger problem.